Star Wars is one of the biggest media franchises in the entire world. Even if you're not a fan of its story or haven't seen any of the movies or TV shows, you've probably still heard about Star Wars in some form or fashion in your life. Now me personally, I am an incredibly huge Star Wars fan. I absolutely love it and I personally think it's one of the greatest stories ever told. I have a seriously deep appreciation for George Lucas and the world he was able to create but that's just a topic for a whole different video. Like most people, the movies of course drew me in as a kid, but what I really enjoyed was the video games like Lego Star Wars, the Force Unleashed series, and the original Star Wars Battlefronts. With that all being said, Star Wars holds a very special place in my heart, and the games they've created over the years at LucasArts are always an insanely fun, nostalgic experience. But there's always been one game over the years that has catapulted itself miles above the rest. A game that got off to a pretty rocky start but came back stronger than ever like a phoenix from the ashes. A game that is easily in my top 3 all time list and arguably the best Star Wars game ever created. That game is Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now I know this game is centuries old at this point, but it holds a near and dear place in my heart, so I wanted to go back and see what old girl was looking like nowadays in 2024. For those of you not caught up on the full lore of this game, I'm just going to break it all down for you real quick, because this game was on an absolute roller coaster of communal highs and lows ever since launch. If you want to skip history class, you can just go to and just hear about the game. Star Wars Battlefront 2 was developed by Dice Game Studios, which is a subdivision of EA. Upon release, this game was under some pretty intense backlash from the community for the implementation of a loot crate system that affected literally anything in the game from character unlocks, emotes, customizables, star cards, you name it. The loot crates were an entire problem in of itself because it completely randomized your unlocks and you never really knew what stuff you were going to get and for what character. So even if you specifically liked playing somebody, there was no real guarantee you're going to unlock the right star cards or customizables for them. And on top of all that, they had a whole microtransaction system where you could spend actual money on in-game currency for more crates. As you would expect, I mean, this was the real play all along. They made everything insane hard to grind for so you eventually one day just give up the old credit card and spend some money on it. This of course had everyone up in arms against DICE and EA because it felt like an extremely sleazy pay to win system. And then one faithful day, EA took to Reddit to address some of the community's concerns and left with one of the most downvoted posts in the site's history. Okay now this is where the redemption arc starts to come into play though. EA has always been a big fan of its loot boxes and random cards. I mean it's almost a universal constant across all of their games. So what made them change now? Long story short, Disney had to step in like, whoa, whoa, fellas, what are you doing with my baby here? And made the executive decision that this was a no good, very bad idea. And with the twirl of their magic wand, microtransactions were gone. Now with the pay to win aspect addressed, the game was left in a rather busted state. With no way to purchase loot crates, the game's progression system became an insane grind. It was a model that incentivized spending money, and now it just didn't have a place anymore. This began a massive overhaul of everything, from progression, card systems, milestones, character unlocks, literally everything in the game got changed up. The loot crates were such an integral part of almost every aspect of the game, and now they're an absolute shell of their former self. Loot crates are pretty much useless. All they do now is serve as a way for you to receive your unlocked items from milestones, but they're definitely still a nice reminder of the dark ages we went through. After the dust settled, DICE still had a bit of a long road ahead of them to get back into the community's good graces, but when I tell you they really knocked it out of the park with this one, I mean they Babe Ruth pointed to the sky, called their shot, and started hitting nothing but dingers from here on out. DICE really wanted this game to be good, and it was certainly felt in the way they took in and implemented community feedback. Battlefront 2 went through a beautiful renaissance period with nothing but really good bug fixes, mechanical reworks, character reworks, new content, I mean you name it. Slowly but surely, update after update, this game crawled back into the light. Battlefront 2 had hit a complete 180 from when it released and was actually a super popular Star Wars game. They even still steadily dropped new maps, characters, and character customizations to keep the experience fresh and fun. But just when things were going really good, one fateful day, everything changed. On April 29th of 2020, DICE announced that they would be releasing the final update for Battlefront 2. There would be no future content after this, but they would continue to maintain the servers so people could play. Now I'm just going to start talking a bit more personal here. I mean, this was a complete gut punch. It felt like I got ran over by a bus, then the driver picked me up, took me to some train tracks, and let me get run over by a train to hide the evidence. I mean, I was in shambles. I damn near cried. Was this the end of Battlefront 2? Did it just wither out into obscurity after this announcement? Absolutely not. Battlefront 2.
I mean, I haven't played this game in years, but I was looking for something to review, and I thought I would just take it back to the old classics. I already mentioned this was one of my favorite games ever, so this might seem a little bias off rip, but let me just explain why this is quite possibly the greatest Star Wars game ever. Alright, that's enough Battlefront 2 history for one day. If you're just joining us again from the timestamp, welcome, welcome back. Before we uh, jump back into it though, I just wanted to kind of explain my experience real quick, because some of you vets are probably sitting here like, who is this lunar guy? Why do I care what he says? So I jumped into Battlefront 2 shortly after the huge microtransaction fiasco. I have about 18 or so days played on Xbox and like two days of time in PC. So we'll just say like 480 hours, give or take. I'm not staring at the numbers at the time of recording this, so I'm not like 100% sure, but I'll just throw it up on the screen. I obviously started on Xbox, but then I took a few year break shortly after they announced the live service was ending. But I had always wanted to try it out on PC. I just never got around to it when I first got this thing. So a few days ago, I downloaded it again, hopped in some games, and I am 100% hooked again. I mean, it is just so much fun. I'm not gonna rant all day about that, but at least y'all know I'm not just some random, you know what I'm saying? I've been around the block and I've played everything this game has to offer like 10 times over. So with that all out of the way, let's just jump right into the game. Star Wars Battlefront 2 is an action shooter that comes complete with a single player campaign and PvP or PvE multiplayer. Let's just get through the campaign real fast because this game is mainly about the multiplayer and that's why we're all really here but this definitely needs to be addressed. As much as I absolutely love this game, I am certainly not stupid, and that campaign really isn't anything special at all. In total, it's like a three to five hour experience that's honestly pretty boring in the story department, besides when there's a canon character on screen. It really just feels like it's here for fan service, which is honestly nice. I mean, that's why I'm here anyways but it feels pretty half-baked compared to the rest of the game. The best comparison I can make for all this is the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. That campaign was also pretty laughable, but at the end of the day, they know that's not why people are here, so they don't really even care. All right, yeah, campaign, one out of 10, give it a five. With that all out of the way, let's just get into the multiplayer, shall we? That's the real meat and potatoes here. For starters, we have to get into the characters and star cards because this is a big part of the multiplayer experience. After the loot box rework, every character from normal troops, special troops, vehicles, and heroes have their own unique level associated to them, and you unlock star cards with them as you level them up. Star cards can be a little overwhelming because everyone has their own unique cards and abilities, but it's really not that complicated at all. Everyone has three abilities that start to become extremely familiar just after a couple games of playing, and you can only pick up to three cards at a time for each person. With the new system, you gradually unlock cards as you level up, so it's not even like you have to sift through everything right off the rip. You just gradually start to find stuff that looks good as you're progressing through the game. Star cards also add an extra layer of uniqueness when it comes to playstyle. I mean, certain cards are better for certain things, so you just kind of build your character around whatever situation you're facing, whether it's a massive group of bots on Supremacy or 1v1 duels in Hero Showdown. Next, this game has maps and characters from every era of Star Wars, the Clone Wars, Age of Rebellion, and Rise of the First Order. There's also various different modes available for play, whether you like big team battles, starfighter battles, hero fights, or maybe you just want to get hunted by some Ewoks. The bigger team battle modes like Supremacy and Galactic Assault are battles ripped straight from the movies and the scale of everything really makes it feel like a complete war zone. There's classes, squad spawns, vehicles everywhere, and even character spawns like special troops or heroes from that era that's specific to the light or dark side. The only real issue with these modes are battle points. The battle points are a bit of an issue for some people because they restrict the free play aspect of just having vehicles and special items be something you find around the map to use. But I will say, it's a pretty fair system that works in this game. Let's just start with the vehicles. I mean, the number of spawns is still going to be restricted either way, and this system just kind of frames them like kill streaks in COD. If you're doing good and get enough points, you earn a vehicle, which just seems fine. And with characters like special troops and heroes, I mean, of course, everyone would want to spawn in as Vader right off rip, but this makes it a pretty fair competition to see who gets it first. And the argument of having to wait your turn to play as a vehicle or special character can be made for either system. Him, honestly. Even if everything just spawned in randomly and it was a mad dash to see who gets it first, you would still have to wait around your, for your turn if everything was taken. Enough of all that though, let's just jump into the starfighter battles. This is a great spot to go if you're tired of waiting and just want to jump into a ship and get to shooting. There's two modes for ship combat. One has mostly normal ships with a few hero ships sprinkled in and the other mode is a straight 4v4 with only hero ships. There's also various different ships available, each with different health, damage values, and abilities. The ship mechanics feel extremely good. It literally feels better in here than it does Star Wars Squadrons, and that was an actual standalone Starfighter game. This is just added content. I haven't put nearly as much time into this mode as the others, but that doesn't mean it's not insanely fun. 
It's definitely a nice addition to the game and a great way to mix things up when the regular battles are getting stale. Also, just to touch on it real quick, I wanted to say that there's a co-op mode where you can play with your friends against waves of bots, which is actually pretty fun and the best way to level up your characters, if you didn't know. And there's also a solo arcade slash practice mode where you can complete missions by yourself or just practice playing any specific character. Okay, now that stuff's not as important, but I thought it would be good to add. But this here is probably my favorite part of the game and such an intricate part of the Battlefront community. Hero showdown. Most people when they first start playing see Hero Showdown as a 2v2 mode against hero characters, but in reality, Hero Showdown is where champions are made. Most veteran players head to this mode to fight people in 1v1 lightsaber duels, and it is probably the coolest thing I've ever been a part of. Now I'm not gonna lie, it's not always as respectful as I'm describing. There's definitely some people that go in and just don't respect a duel, but for the most part, everyone's in there to just fight one-on-one -on -one with lightsabers and it is great. The lightsaber combat in this game is so incredibly deep too and takes a long time to really get good at. If anybody remembers the combat from the first Battlefront, it was incredibly stiff and lightsaber lockups played a huge role in the fight, but here in Battlefront 2, your character is completely free and fluid. It feels so good. Every character has their own health pool and regenerate, three abilities, unique stamina, and even unique saber swing patterns. The biggest learning curve for this is just knowing what each character is about to do, but there's also a huge skill gap between mechanical skill. You can just tell with some fights that some people really know what they're doing just based off specific moves or combos. I could literally talk about this game mode for probably 10 hours, I mean I absolutely love everything about it, but I I just don't want to drown this video in just that. I could probably make a separate video just based on the dueling, but let me know if that'd be something you're interested in in the comments below. Long story short, this is some of the most fun you could possibly have in this game, and I wish there was a whole standalone game just based off the 1v1s. Before we wrap up the gameplay too, it's also worth mentioning that this game has an extensive community of modders who are trying to pick up where DICE left off with the project. They're constantly adding new skins and characters to play as, and it's the only new content this game has gotten in a long time. Overall, the gameplay is extremely fun in almost every single aspect. There's various different game modes that all feel unique and keep the experience fresh. Some modes I didn't even cover in this video, but they're all great games gaming experiences that fully engulf you in the world and story of Star Wars. Switching over to visuals, I mean dog, have you been watching this video the whole time? This game looks absolutely beautiful. This game came out in 2017 and is still one of the most graphically pleasing experiences I've ever had in a video game. As I mentioned earlier, I originally started playing on Xbox, which already looked pretty good, but coming over to PC, I mean... I don't even have all my settings maxed and it is pretty out here. Everything from the maps, characters, vehicles, and weapons have a great level of detail in them. And as a Star Wars fan, the littlest things are very visually pleasing. Like just sitting here in the loading screen where you pick a hero, they look great. They don't necessarily look exactly like their movie counterparts, but the details in the face and clothes are awesome. And just look at those sabers, I mean dog, they're beautiful. If y'all don't know, I'm a pretty big saber guy myself, and I think they did a pretty good job at making all the hilts as accurate as possible, which is a very appreciated detail. Moving on to audio, I mean, Star Wars has reused the same couple sounds for blasters, sabers, screams, explosions, you name it and they're fully present in here. I don't have any complaints about the audio in here, everything sounds really good and fully immerses you in the world of Star Wars. The hero actors all did a great job at embodying their character. Not everybody from the movies was able to come back and voice their character, but for the most part, they actually got a lot of people to come sign on for the project, which is pretty cool. Moving on to bugs and issues, I mean it's really sad to say, but DICE didn't leave our boy in the best state they could've. At the time of DICE discontinuing live service, there was still quite a bit of various issues that plagued the game like crashes, performance issues, lobby issues, and character balancing. A lot of the smaller stuff doesn't really affect the game experience that much. The one real problem they have nowadays is with lobbies because the player count isn't what it used to be. For whatever reason, this game has a really hard time putting people in lobbies together and there's no sort of blobby migration. Say there's only two people trying to search for a game at the same time, but they both get put into different lobbies, they're both literally just gonna sit there until someone else joins the game. The game can't figure out a way to combine these dead lobbies to make games that work, so you spend a fair bit of time just searching, but this is mainly only a problem in the smaller team modes. What doesn't help this either is the amount of game modes this game has. Now that the player count is a lot smaller, people are spread across these modes a lot thinner, so that can also make it a bit harder to find a lobby. There's also a few character balancing issues that will never be addressed. Most of you who play already know Vader is just absolutely cracked out of his mind, and he will just always be that way now, which I guess is fitting, but damn, it is hard to fight a Vader. I wouldn't really say that's a game-breaking problem though, because it's such a small part of the whole game experience. The game also has a few unintended mechanics that are mostly used to gain an advantage in duels. There's special tricks to get around your opponent's block, and even a parry mechanic that's not deliberately explained by the game. 
These aren't really that impactful in most game situations, it's mostly just for duels, but they're still technically unintended, so I thought I'd bring it up. There's some good YouTube videos out there by some pretty good duelists that explain these tricks a bit more in depth, if you're curious in that. Overall, Battlefront 2 is a perfect Star Wars game. Anything you could possibly want to ever do in the Star Wars universe can be accomplished here, whether that's fighting in the Battle of Geonosis, or playing as your favorite character, having some of the most intense saber battles you've ever seen. This game just has so much to it. It's like Battlefield, For Honor, and Star Wars Squadrons all in one Star Wars game. So much went into each aspect of combat and they all feel insanely smooth and intuitive. The community this game has built is truly unmatched too. There's a massive group of people who are just here for the duels and that's what they pride themselves on. There's also people who love creating their own little roleplay battalion of clone troopers and fighting in big team wars. Like what? And there's groups of people who keep innovating the game and dream dice ad with mods. However you like to play, this game has brought so many Star Wars fans together. It took a long time to get to where it is today, but this game is just downright flawless. It has everything you could possibly want from a game like this. The only problems it has nowadays is they can't add new characters and there's no Battlefront 3 in sight. I'm definitely someone who's holding out hope for a Battlefront 3 in the future, or at least something similar, but in the meantime we have this and it isn't going anywhere. If I had to wrap this all up into a review today, I think I'm going to hit it with a 10. Like I already said, I mean this is easily in my top 3 all time game list. This is such an incredible game and I'm honestly just privileged to have lived in the time when it was created. I would kiss Battlefront 2 on the mouth so hard, you don't even know. Well that's going to about do it here for the review today. If you still play or have played Battlefront 2 before, comment down below and let me know what your experience was with the game, I'd love to hear it. I also might post a few dueling videos here in the future, so let me know if that'd be something you're interested in. I'm certainly not the best, but I'm pretty decent at the 1v1s. Your boy can definitely hold his own in most fights. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. This has been Lunar, and welcome to Bound.